So what do you think you must know before you play a game to get high score? The rules. The rules. Oh, achievers are small. <laughs> rules of the game. This is what I. This is what I meant. The rules of the game. But actually, it is the judging criteria. So before you take part in the contest, make sure that you have a good look in the judging criteria. And tonight we are going to we are, we are going to focus on the first two. Speech development and effectiveness. It occupies 55% of the total score, which is a lot. But never ever underestimate the last score. Because the last score is what you have been working, what you have been practicing, what you have been learning in every single post master's meeting. It's just easy. They have all been here right now. It's a matter of how effective you can present it to the audience. So make sure that before you join the contest, please have a good look. Because all the judges on that day will be distributed a piece of paper. And then they will give you sparks. The marking scheme will be all depends on this sixth area. And we are using a very scientific approach because even if you go up to the stage and you don't speak at all, but if you do well in the board, then you will get 45 marks at least. <laughs> so it will help you to get higher score in this sense. Okay. So basically, speech development is indeed, and effectiveness is, is indeed what you say, how you say it, and why you say it. Let me focus on this area. What you say? Well, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think is the most important element in the speech? Answer! Answer! What's the most important element for speech? Story. Thinking. Story! Thinking. Message. Message. <laughs> message is very important. Why is it important? Because a message is just like the soul of a body. Without the soul, a body is just like a salted fish. <laughs> <laughs> As mentioned in my house, even child. So make sure that, but message, I remember, 
I remember many years ago, okay, I was called upon in a Jesus meeting to, to talk about a kingdom topic. What that topic is about is how I lost in the context. Second, how I lost in the context. Because at that time, during, during my time, uh, many Achievers members are rude and mean. They like to put salt onto your wound and make you suffer. So they asked me to share how I lost in the context. In 2006, I was already being called a seasoned Toastmasters because after I joined Achievers for almost 10 years. So under that mentor mentorship program, I was assigned a few different mentees. And there was a one young and beautiful mentee who would like to join me to take part in the Hebrew speech contest together with me. So, you know, in 2006, in think I was still quite young <laughs> and likely to be charmed. A charming and young mentor bumped into a young and beautiful mentee. Do you think it's normal that I would spend a little bit extra effort in order to help her feel better? Yeah. It's normal, right? Yeah. yeah. So what happened is I spent, you know, like some more time than revising the script, add more, add more funny elements into her speech. And by the end of the day, bingo! She was played second. You know what happened to me? I was four. Oh. I was four. Who is she? I know that. Well, that's a, that's a secret. You don't have to know the name. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mention the name here. But the, the, the moral of the story is, or the message of the table topic is, never ever compete with your mentee on the same, on the same stage <laughs> or in the same context. Because once you lose it to her, it really hurt. <laughs> what I'm referring to is when you get this when you're going to tell your stories about your message, I suggest a long hearted message. Why what I well, I'm not saying that happy message is no good. Well, not really. Because when your name is called, when your message, when the, when the title is given, and then you click with the happy message, with the supporting story, well, you free. But what I'm saying is that a two minute speech, a light hearted message will fit into the situation. You know there are three taboos in the Toastmasters? You know what you know what they are? Come on! You know what they are? And they three are taboos. Sex. Politics. Sex. Sex. And, and religion. Three taboos. That we should not be talking about it in our table topic or in our uh, regular meeting. But after a second thought, I'm thinking, is there any other topic in the whole universe that's more interesting than this three? No. No. They are very interesting to talk about, but we don't talk about politics, but context. No sex, but relationship. We don't mention about religion, but share what we believe with our audience. I'm giving you some directions here. What we can talk about when your name is called and the title is given. This is the direction. Relationship, and they are more to the side of humanity. You know, Toastmasters like to gossip. You know, Toastmasters like to listen to rumors and stuff like this. So they will be very much be attracted when we're talking about this area. Last but not least, well, when you speak, make sure that you speak in first person. You know why? Because you are the one who know you know yourself the best, and you probably can speak anything very specific, very personal, and all your audience would like to hear your background, anything about you. So speak at first person is more to the point, in touch with your audience. So now, you know what to say. Are you ready for the contest? You 
you know. So after you know what to say, again, is the next one will be, it's about speech development. The next one will be, um, how to say it, to make it effective. So again, question to in now, what do you think is the most attractive or most impressive starting, beginning of your speech? By using a, who said that? Question. Wow, oh, I really are smart. <laughs> I didn't did, did realize that. <laughs> <laughs> to start with the question. You know why to start with the question is it's very much attractive to, to the audience because once you throw in a question, your audience you are already carrying your audience to think. Immediately fall into the trap. I would say, all right, to start with the question, but, and, well, just to give you an example, if the title is Contest, for example, or oh, ladies and gentlemen, when was your last time to, ta to participate in table tabletop contest? Reason? If the title is Watches, or oh, ladies and gentlemen, when was the last time you bought a Rolex? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you think? Yes. To ask a question, I, in my opinion, is the most powerful opening for for a speech, even if it's a longer or shorter speech. To try to try to think and start with a question. Next to the question is, I would recommend to start a quick to start with your speech with a quick statement. What do you mean by quick statement? For example, last month. A 12 year old girl told me she wanted to move out of the house and rent the room outside. Do you know what that means? The message is patient is needed when you're talking to a youngster at home. So that's the message. But the first quick statement meaning that I'm giving you a summary or I create an expectation. That what I'm going to say is have a more or less equivalent effect. Let me start with the question to let your audience to think. When they think, then your statement, your question, your story will become more effective in a sense. In the past, I have seen, I have, I have uh, watched so many table topic speakers um, who struggle to utter the two minutes words, to try to finish the story. But they forgot about to use their senses. Do you know? Do you know your eyes can your eyes can talk? Do you know the facial, your facial expression can express a lot of uh, emotions? I'm happy. <laughs> I'm sad. I'm angry. But many of them were not be able to use their senses to communicate with their audience. Like what I just mentioned in the first page, you know, the judging criteria is occupied 45% of the total score. If you are going to use your own characters just to share with the audience, it will have some major effect. While they're in good condition, while the senses are in good condition, ensure that you use them well. Why I said that? Well, thinking myself as an example. In 2007, all my senses were so good, so that's why I got a champion. And now, as I become more mature, all my senses are not going downhill. Don't think that I'm looking at you right now. Actually, I don't, I don't recognize your face clearly. <laughs> when my wife, when my wife talked to me, I can only hear 50%. <laughs> so my, my, my senses were going downhill. So make sure that in very good condition for use them well in your speeches. Don't waste it. To relax. Do you think it's easy to relax? Are you nervous now? <laughs> nervous is easy. <laughs> Don't you think so? Because nervous is involuntary. 
but to relax after you become nervous is so difficult. So how to relax? Well, I, I don't have any specific method to share with you, but before you step, and, step on stage or get into your contest, try to breathe in and breathe out as many times as possible. Because the more oxygen inside your body, the easier to relax. This is a way, but you can see my parameters is right there. To start slowly. Basically, when you step on stage, when you after your first word, you're trying to attract your audience in the in the first 10 to 15 seconds. So start slowly. You calm yourself down. Then probably it's the best way to attract your audience, but also to get yourself calm before you go on for the next two minutes. So now uh, you know what to say, you know how to say it. Do you think they're easy? No. Well, I think it's very easy. When I'm talking, I'm, I'm, when I'm sharing all these points in my workshop, they are quite easy, I think, in my opinion. But when you're in context, they will be discomfort. Because of various reasons. Might be your nervous, might be because you're thinking of your girlfriend, because you have a bad dream, whatever. So basically, you know how to say it, what to say it. But there's an old Chinese saying. Distant water could not put out a fire nearby. <laughs> have you heard of this? Let's say it again. A distant water cannot help put out a fire nearby. <laughs> Meaning that our table traffic contest is seven days away, we only have a few days left. So do you think that we can use them well before that contest? So what we need to do? In Toastmaster, what makes perfect? Practice. Practice makes perfect. Great! So what are we going to do? Prepare? Yeah, <laughs> prepare. Sounds like contradicting, right? Prepare and unprepare. But how to do, can we prepare table topic? Do you think we can prepare table topic? Hey, come on! Can we prepare table topic? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Yes, I know. So how to prepare? Okay, how to prepare? Well, I think what you have done in the past four hours. Okay. What else? Any suggestions? Any other suggestions? So I'm not taking <laughs> but what I'm trying to get to is when you prepare and prepare, meaning that we have to practice again. Practice makes perfect. But it's a, it's a way. How are you going to practice? What are you going to practice? This is one my suggestion. There are issues is more materials for you to talk about. Books. I'm not going to ask you to read 10 books in the next seven days. It's it seems like a, a Bible. But what you can do is read the table of content. Do you know what happened? If you go into a bookstore, it will not be too difficult to read the table of content for the 10 books. But the table of content can give you some insight, message, that you can think of. What you don't need to practice is when you encounter any current issues, like for example the marathon yesterday, the COVID-19, the five branch government gave it to you. Are you happy with that? Are you, do you have any fear with that? Are you sad with that? But what you're going to do is, anything that you encounter, books or current issues, make sure that you will formulate a two-minute speech right after. Meaning you have to practice for some new things, for some ideas, but you have to formulate immediately. Right away, you give yourself practice, oh, what? When, when can you do that? While you're taking a shower, while you're you know, sitting on the toilet, or while you're having a lunch, or taking a break, whatever. Well, even a few times. You can do a few times a day. Because they are easy. Through the internet and area, everywhere that you can, you can batch yourself all these materials. But when I talk about YouTube speeches, and you see the word uh, inspiration. Well, in YouTube speeches, you can easily see lots of different speeches by Toastmaster champions, right? They have a lot of the messages, uh, content, or you can share. But other than speeches, there are any other outstanding performance that you probably can learn it from. 
How many of you know who Cody Lee is? Cody Lee, not Eddie Lee. You know who Cody Lee is? Sorry, say that again. Correct. Cody Lee is the champion 2019 in America's Got Talent. So why I want to mention this guy? Because actually he was, I think he's now 25. Uh, by the time that he, he joined, he's like 22 or 23. He was born with some unfortunate character. He's blind and he is autistic. Can you imagine a person who's blind and autistic? He can only live in his own world, he cannot communicate with outsiders. But when he sings, this is the skill that he was using. To get a champion in America's Cup Talent. But when he sings, every word he utters, I watch, I watch a few videos from these guys. You know what happened to me? When I watched these guys perform, my, literally my eyes got wet. What does it mean? When my eyes literally got wet, means that I was, I was fully for every word he said, he just, with this unfortunate thing, and he changed the whole world. If Kobe Lee can do it, well, why would you, why can't you do it? In your perspective, in your industry, in your career. What I'm saying that, well, when you watch Bill or this outstanding performance, you could get inspired. When you get inspired, well, when I watch the videos today, it seems like when I do the work, I look better. I feel better. I do think everything's in order. It's very strange. I don't know why. But when I got inspired, my brain muscle got trained up. My brain muscle think faster. What you want to learn is, well, you want your brain to think faster, right? During the typical project. So this is what I'm saying. So these three area is only the materials and the areas that you get trouble and to get some information from and then what you have to do is not to mention mental drill it's like you, I, that's why I suggest that you use the two minutes to formulate your own deep and opinion but not just mental drill mental drill is silent you don't think only you think and you have to speak ah. that means you have to speak it out loud in whatever areas, in whatever topic that you have encountered. So this is what I meant by training. By training, by practice, before going, before the table topic contest next Monday. I hope you can do it in the next seven days, and every day, two times a week, well, you get a standard, three times a day, you know, like your breakfast, your lunch, and your, and your dinner, three times a day, seven days, so it's 21 times. When you can practice for 21 times before the table topic contest, well, I think you're in shape. And I think you're ready. I think you're ready to you take part in taking part in that particular table topic contest. In my opinion. Last but not least, level of competence. Do you think it's important? Because your level of importance before Going for the contest, I think, is significant. Means that you have confidence to speak up, you have confidence to face the group of the audience, particularly under a competition pressure. But how are you going to how are you going to uplift your level of confidence? I don't know. Well, you have to find it out yourself, because everybody will be different. Taking myself as an, exa an example. Anytime when I go to attend an important event, a function, or right before I need to give a speech, what I'm going to do one or two days before, I will go to have a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, but this is only for me. Why I have a haircut? Because when my hair is long, I feel very aged, you know, clumsy, very slow. But when I have my haircut, Oh, no one can see my white hair on both sides, and I feel very light and fast. I think faster, better, but this is only me. Well, taking a haircut for me is uplift my level of confidence for somebody else, like Derek. 
maybe you would be impressed with part of it. <laughs> just, a, just a different you know, one person. So you have to find out what's your best activities to uplift the level of confidence. This is this is what I mean. So right now, you know what to say, you know how to say it, and then you can prepare, you can practice, make yourself perfect, prepare the unprepared. Are you ready for a contest? Particularly when those people raise your hand. So because you are going to take part in your in your contest. Right? Are you ready? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure you? Well, I'm, I, I'm not even ready myself, but I'm just talking about it in the next 20, 25 minutes, but, and then you are ready. Well, I feel, I feel this is magnificent. <laughs> that uh, you are ready, then I will feel good. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking this opportunity right here to wish you uh, all the contestants next Monday good luck, and uh, be your best. Try to do something in the next seven days to get yourself in shape. Uplift your energy, uplift your stamina, uplift your confidence, and then you will be there to win. Alright? Well, last but not least, we will have a QA section. But this QA section is very special. Because you are not going to ask me questions. <laughs> I'm going to ask you questions because this is actually a table topic session. <laughs> You see the idea right now, right? The Q&A. Very interesting Q&A here. So, uh, since you're ready, ready, so what I'm going to do is, I will make this uh, table of this Q&A section like a mini table topic contest. So, your name will be called, your title will be given, your title again, and then your name again. But the only thing we don't have is, we don't have the one minute of silence. Because it's you know, like a, uh, the one minute of silence is for the judges to mark it, to mark, but our, our two uh, evaluators have uh, plenty of time to, to develop. Mimi, challenge, challenge, Mimi. <laughs> challenge? You like challenge? You like to be challenged? Yes. I like to challenge everyone in one form of them. In my whole life, I always like to challenge people. <laughs> my husband, my family members, friends. This is very interesting um, stage. Life. It's full of challenge. I encounter a lot of challenge. And um, every time when I get over the challenges, I feel so satisfactory. And that's why it makes me keep on facing challenge, learning some physical skills, especially to make me have more brain and uh, I think I did some challenging and very brave things maybe you didn't encounter with and uh, maybe also you did not have that brain to do it but I did it that's the challenge it's a good thing for everyone I'm not preaching to you, but this is what I like it. And I really like you to invite me as the first table topic person. Thank you. You're welcome. And so I will see so many people, they know they wanted to get into the challenge, but they really did not do well. So think about that and do something as best as you can. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Next uh, contestant is Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer Rainbow. Rainbow. Jennifer. Rainbow. Where do you see the rainbow? Any idea? After the rain. After the rain, of course. Do you know it rain is? Yes. Yes or no? For me, I don't find like raining, except in my childhood. When I was young, I remember I had worn a very cute raincoat, rain boot, to went to, to went to school when it's raining. I could only wear those things when it was raining. You know, during that time, I love raining. But when I grew up, gradually, I don't find like raining because when it's raining, you need to put an umbrella, you hold your handbag, and a lot of stuff, lunch box, and it's clumsy. And I get all the cute rain coat or rain boots. I just find it a nuisance of raining. So you see, when we grow up sometimes, we forgot the beauty that we used to appreciate when we are in trouble. Now, when you ask me, do I need like raining? No, still I don't want to blame it. But I always remember that I will be rainbow after the rain. And it's a forest of me. Blessing in disguise. Only after the rain I could have the rainbow. When I when I face my work, when I face relationship, conflicts or any problems, I always bear in mind. There's always rainbow, and you know how rainbow comes after the rain. It has the signs too. It's about the reflections, right? Okay? So when I face the physical circumstances, I remember there's always rainbow coming to do self reflections. Do that. Thank you very much. The next, the third contestant, that's gay. That's gay loud, four season, four season, that's gay loud. What season we love? I hate winter. <laughs> I hate winter. You don't like winter. So all of you hate winter. I love winter. <laughs> 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 Simply because I can wear all my winter clothes. You know nowadays the weather is getting hotter and hotter, and my my house is so small. I want to buy some new clothes. And then my wife said, you got too many clothes there. So what do we do? I have to throw away some clothes. Because I saw some very expensive and elegant jacket from famous friend of what a few ladies have worn. And then when I wore this elegant coat, I'll go to play piano. Do you know there is a little piece of classic? Seasons by Tchaikovsky. I like I like to wear elegant coats and then I start playing the piano. And then my wife said, "What about those clothes? What the throw away?" I said, "Well, uh, you are the master of the house. It will be sign what clothing you leave in the house." So I got winter when my wife start clean up all the clothes, keep more space in the closet. And then she buy more clothes to create the cost. So, definitely. Winter is some good season if I love warm clothes and I can play the piano music or try to the seasons. I still love winter. So don't, both ladies hate winter. I don't know why. I mean, when you come out in winter, now it's 
commandment. It's not from anyone, and you can scare everybody in winter or spring or everywhere. It's just look too happy, isn't it? Not winter. Not winter. Buy me. Buy more new clothes. And enjoy those famous lads. Put on the clothes and play in the music life. Like Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Vanessa, no, not Vanessa, Eddie, Eddie Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, NUV and Vanessa Lee, and we go at the last thing last Vanessa, if you were invisible, if you were invisible, Vanessa. Today I'm Eddie Lee. Eddie Lee, no one likes to be invisible. And so, he was tell us that not. And that's the most right? And she says, It's visible? Tell me about it! I have been invisible all my life! Why do you think I'm a toastmaster? When I was small, Daddy said, Shut up! You are just a girl! It's never afraid for girls with special things. So I grew up and we got married. So I thought, hey, my husband, my best friend, he has to listen to me, yes? So when it comes to matters of family, especially his family, he goes, shut up! You're just a wife! <laughs> so, I got my own baby doll. Now, my child could be like Annie Lee. Tell her off! <laughs> so, when my girl was called, Mommy, Mommy! Shut up! You're just a girl! I'm like Annie Lee! I do what I don't want things to happen. I don't want to be so and as a girl. And yet, when I turn into a mother, I sold it as my girl. <gasps> I better get rid of this Eddie. Oh, oh. He's very bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you sometimes caught yourself in situations where you felt like, oh no? I've turned into the devil that I don't want to be. You bloody, bloody tea. <laughs> <laughs> they pop out when you least expect it. So be careful, be cautious. Don't ever turn into the devil that you don't want to. <laughs> I think, I think Vanessa is a great woman. <laughs> <laughs> next next uh, contestant is Derek Jones. Thank you. I know uh, there's a, a, a profession in accounting, so I just picked this one for you. Uh, Derek, money is not the object. Money is not the Derek. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, actually, it's the opening of Eddie's speech 10 years ago. Why well, I mentioned that? Because the topic is what, what is the topic? Is, money is not the main object. Well, the, the, the topic we only take once. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Eddie for years. Well, when I joined the talk, well, you know, table topics need stories. So now I show a story about Eddie Day. Oh. <laughs> At that time, when I joined the talk, I am a new member. He's very active, very strong, very talkative in front of every meeting and in front of the audience. I admire his style. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the club because Eddie. Wow. Oh. 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 
Of course, I told you to. You didn't tell me that. Of course, well, <laughs> in my first contest, I and Eddie, well, he's the one before me, the contestant before me. It's a great pleasure. But when he put on the stage, the first thing is, you may be said like what I've done, not what I show to you. It's a human speech, and he's not enough. But he's so nervous, relaxed, honest, relaxed, very relaxed, relaxed. And so, it's a good speech, but not properly delivered with human speech. So, you may not believe that. Even if it's a great speaker, I beat him in that contest. Oh. And sorry, it was not, he had no place. So, what about this? Because I tried to talk to you because I wanted to achieve. Well, I would say I got some achievement because of it. Because I beat him in my first speech. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Achievement is not, money is not the first motive. Jordan Achievement is to learn from those great speakers like Eddie. Learn from them instead. Are you sure that you know the topic? <laughs> 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 Well, let's have some fun. Now, let me uh, call for our guest. All the guests are very nervous. Brent Hoy! I'll give you an easy one. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I think this is this one too. Brent, who is your hero? Who is your hero? Right. Derek! <laughs> <laughs> because she, he beat you in his, in his first speech contest. I don't remember that. <laughs> and also, he's a mentor in the Achiever Toastmaster Club. Ooh. When I joined Toastmaster Club, I was so nervous. Um, public speaking. I is introvert. I rarely speak to human because I'm uh, working in IT industry. I only speak computer languages, <laughs> not human languages. <laughs> <laughs> so when I joined this last class, the first speech, I saw someone like Dirk able to perform on the stage. That is me. Because I thought, I thought at that time, I was much charming than Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I was taller than Derek. <laughs> I still still doing so good. That's why I approached him to ask for his advice. And when I joined the first contest, this my hero called me for around four days and teach me how to write a speech. After four days, can you imagine? He told me, can you need more time for normal? We already we had a, a, a conversation for four nights. I still I want to have some time to post some girl because I was single at that time. But <laughs> another single man there, my hero, keep calling me. Wow. I'm so I'm so impressed. That's why I, till this moment, I'm no longer a chosen master, I remember, I'm no longer a cheaper, but he is still my cheaper. He's still right. I, I still love him very much. Hello, Ryan. Hello, that's his name. Oh, I cannot imagine that. Uh, seven. <laughs> I give you a good one too. Angular, a gift. A gift, Angular. 
I think in life, the most um, gifts that I got for myself is experience. Experience is the name that everyone gives to their mistakes. Like, okay, we all learn from mistakes. And then, it's from, from through this process, we will cut ourselves seasoned or experienced. Look what Ed just mentioned. He was a seasoned member. Why? Because he learned a lot of mistakes, or he made a lot of mistakes in achievers, and then he learned from all of them. But now he becomes a seasoned member. I think that we all need this gift to be to get experience, to make mistakes, to willing to step out of our comfort zone, to challenge ourselves like next week. You challenge yourself and participate in the whole topic um, uh, contest. One thing remember, failure is the mother of the success, right? So I think if we're willing to make mistakes, this is a gift that are willing, that we are willing to give up to our life. Just like, okay, I believe all of us, all of us will be blessed that we join. This organization, Toastmasters, because here we have a platform that allows us to make mistakes. Just like, okay, I remember um, when I was the president of this club, I always make mistakes because I thought when I was selected as president, I thought I had all the power in the world to ask people to do things. But no, actually, I, I find out that actually I have to serve our members. I have to develop my charisma to let people like me so that they are willing to work for me and also they are willing to contribute to the club. All these are experience and all these are mistakes that you know we make during our life. And finally, we find that this is the gift. Willing to take challenge, willing to make mistakes, actually the a gift that we are willing to give it to our life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Last but not least is Jay Kim. Jay. Jay is higher? Okay. William. Hello. William. I tried. I saw you there. Sorry. William Typhoon. Typhoon. William. Uh, sometimes when you are at home and uh, you have a typhoon coming, it's a very good experience because uh, you are cut off from the world and it's a very quiet uh, moment that you have to have peace with your family. Unless inside the house you also have another typhoon from your wife, <laughs> from your loved one. So I'm thankful to uh, Vanessa, uh, who told me one time that how to calm the typhoon. <laughs> My wife at that time she was she was angry with me for something, and then uh, Vanessa gave me a very good advice that there are so many people who call people on the phone and calm them so much fun without even having a face-to-face -face meeting with them. So you can do that to your wife. So you just have to know what she wants. And then I took her advice. And I took her to a place where in, when she was young, she paid uh, $5 for a soy, soya bean uh, milk and uh, some uh, glutinous rice. Now the price has gone up five times to $25. And I said, even though, the price has gone up five times. I was still paid <laughs> With that, she really calmed up. <laughs> and I'm so thankful. Thank you. <laughs> you know, five dollars and twenty-five dollars, or or those five pounds, but it's still a very small amount. But uh, what? I think uh, these uh, eight. Uh, People, topic contestants, just presenting uh, to their best. 
So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please vote for the table, uh, the best uh, table topic uh, contestant of the speaker. Thank <laughs> you.